here. And we'll do the same. <laughs> uh, hey, it's good to see people like earlier in the day. Then. Are you a writer? You're a writer? What's your, what's your name? No, I just, because I just met you. I mean, what's your name? Uh, Stephanie. Stephanie. Have you been here before? Not watch me work. Okay. But you've been in this building. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is Watch Me Work. So um, does anybody not know what we're doing for Watch Me Work? There's a lot of people here. There must just be a reason. There's honey, and you all are delicious and come to the honey pot. Does anybody uh, need a... Um, and it's okay if you don't know what Watch Me Work is. It's, it's fine. You, yeah, maybe it will help if I explain it to you. Okay. Um, because it's kind of, I mean, it sounds like it's something, and it's maybe something else. <laughs> Which makes it perfect for these times. <laughs> I won't comment on the news. Um, so, uh, watch me work. So, w we've been doing this for about 10 years in the lobby of the public theater. And basically, it's a meta-theatrical writing workshop. I think I got that right where um, the first thing we do is work together. So we all do our work. It can be writing, and it can be anything, but most of us do writing. And we do, our, we do the action of the play together, and that's doing our work. And then after the timers are, um, Audrey and I set timers, and after 20 minutes, we create the dialogue of the play together, which is, <laughs> which is, which is, uh, which is, us talking about your work. So it's called Watch Me Work, but the me in the title is you. So basically what I'm here for is I'm here to talk to you about your creative process. So if you have any questions, issues, problems, concerns about your creative process, I'm here to talk to you about your creative process, okay? So the thing is we don't talk about my creative process necessarily, only how it intersects directly with yours. Uh, Okay, as you ask a specific question. Okay? That, hmm? So, uh, yeah. So, we're also live streamed. Ah! Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> if you want a camera and Audrey, am I, am I saying that right? Avery and Audrey. Yeah. All of a sudden I was like, ugh, weird. Um, Avery and Audrey, so Avery's behind the camera and Audrey is going to come and tell us the folks who are watching on the how to get in touch with us. So there's several ways you can get in touch with us. Um, if you are watching on HowRound.tv, there's actually a little chat next to the video that you can chat on. You can also tweet, us, tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP, hashtag HowRound, which is H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. <laughs> and you can also uh, look at the Public Theater Instagram. You can ask questions there or the uh, Public Theater Facebook page. That was really fast. And hopefully you understood that. Uh, yeah, and all you don't have to, all of you sitting here, you don't have to do any of those things because you're here. And you can just shout out your concerns, questions, issues. How are we doing? So this is a prop. This is a typewriter. <laughs> um, and uh, usually I type, uh, I write and I type. But today I have a lot of reading to do, this big book. So I'm just going to sit here and read. And we're going to set our timers and get to work.
now we're going to do the dialogue part, which is basically, and we're going to ask big questions about your work. So, Stephanie has a question. <laughs> Go, Stephanie. Um, I was wondering about if you had any tips about the revision process. Because when I write, there'll be like bursts of like, it'll start one way and then formulate and grow into something. And the way it's shifted works to a certain point that looks good. The beginning kind of sucks. <laughs> but, but what I like here is good. And I guess I'm just afraid to let go of certain things in order to grow my piece. I, I don't know. <laughs> so there, did everybody hear stuff in there for folks working downstairs? But yeah, so she talking about the revision process and she gets started and she keeps writing and it grows and oftentimes she gets to something very beautiful and now it's time to rewrite and she doesn't want to <laughs> lose. What did you say? I, I don't want I don't want to I'm afraid of changing it and losing it. In order, part, in order to grow. In order to grow. Because I've changed it before and then I was like, well, now the whole thing sucks. <laughs> uh, so. I know, you're afraid of changing in order to grow. Right? Like, that's kind of cool, actually. Um, I would say keep what you like and let the parts go that you know. You know what I mean? Is that you can allow the part that you love the part that comes like on page, let's say, 30, to inform the whole product, the whole piece. You see what I mean? So it's, it's okay to like just cut and then grow from something yeah. else? Yeah, 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 totally, totally, totally. It's totally okay to do that. Okay. I think, yeah. Yeah, it's totally okay. You don't have to like start from the beginning and then make everything march along. You can just, you can circle the parts that you like, right, and let them inform for example, if you start in the character, uh, the main character is a cat, and on page 30 you realize that it's, the main character is actually a unicorn, and you like the unicorn better than you like the cat, you can just make it all about the unicorn. So, you know, that's really crude, but you understand know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't have to, that's why they have those phrases, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You don't have to throw the baby out if you want to throw out the bathwater. Right? Yeah. You know, like when you move apartments, you don't have to like throw away everything. Right. You just throw away the shit that don't fit in your new home. You know? Mm -hmm. So then making the other parts flow in and work, like when I start on page 30 and then recreate, yeah. there were pages on 22 that I kind of like to sew them back yeah. together. Yeah. Just go back and yeah. play with what works. Yeah. Keep what you like and leave the rest. It's also a popular saying. You know, and see if, see if that works. And also that creates a rewriting process that's not as scary, you know? And we're not gonna avoid the rewriting process because we think just because now we're rewriting, we have to throw away everything that we, and we love like 20 pages of it and we don't like 20 other pages. You don't have to throw away everything. You just keep the parts that are working for you. That's what I do, you know. All right, does that make sense? And please come back, because now I know you're a writer, so I'm going to be nagging you and hounding you. Yeah, good question, Stephanie. Anybody else? Yeah, man. Um, what's your name? Saul. Saul? Yes. Okay, Saul. So what's your question? Um, my question is, as I'm in the very early development parts of the process, right. um, I have a very clear concept, and okay. it's also very personal. Okay. So, do you have any advice um, for someone who is trying to uh, really deliver a clear, cut, straight delivery of this concept while still having that freedom that comes along with just writing? Does that make sense? It, it, it does, but so Samuel has a very clear concept. And he wants to you want to write a draft. Yeah, yeah. and I'm afraid that I'll uh, feel constricted with the idea that I've already right. created. Right. Right, 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 right. 
So yeah, yeah, but it, it's it's an interesting problem because you, you have it. You're very excited about your concept or idea, right? At the same time, you don't want to feel constricted by the thing you're excited about. So it, it's tricky. I would I would say just let go of the feeling that oh no, my idea is going to kind of tie me to things I don't like, and remind yourself that your idea, your concept, as you call it, is going to tie you to things that you really love. You just switch it around in your head, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. oh gee, I decided again, I decided to write about a unicorn. Oh no, now I gotta write about unicorns? You know, no, I get to write about unicorns, oh goody. You know, just, get ex just remind yourself that you love your concept, you love your idea or what you call it a concept, you know? And just keep telling yourself, this is gonna be great. You can kind of give yourself a mantra like, my concept's gonna lead me to a really wonderful story. You see what I mean? Instead of, oh, my concept is going to limit me and make it impossible for me to write something that I really love. You, you know what I'm saying? So, just be kind of, a lot of times we have to just, like, really groove our mind to encourage ourselves to keep going. So, I hope I come back. Are you, are you local? Do you live around here? Yeah, I do. Okay, well, you can tell me. Visit us again. Because we can, you know, we can keep track of you. No, we can, you know, keep encouraging. It's a great question. Thank you. Anybody else? Nina, Nina, Nina. Um, what do you do if, um, I don't know, like think something important, but maybe because it inspires you to write something, but then, uh, you know, it's hard to write about it because it's important and sad. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes you laugh. So Nina said, so what if something important and sad happens to you, and you want to write about it, but it's hard to write about because it's important and sad? Right. So, what do you mean? Yeah. So, so because it's, and it also because it happened to you. So it's something that is impacting you very greatly, yeah. right? It's big and it's kind of like uh, heavy. Yes. And how do you write about something that's big and heavy and personal? Yes. Because it's so, it's so, it's right. 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 Yeah. Do you wait until you, 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 you could. You could wait, or you could, you know, best effort, you know, low expectations, you know what I'm saying? Because if you get, the tricky thing is, if, if you could, you could wait, sure, that's an option. So option number one, wait, good. Option number two, best effort, right? Uh, best effort is, again, you do, you do your best, low expectations, you just want to try. Option number three, which is connected to option number one and two, come back and revisit it again. So don't think that this is your only chance to write about this thing. This might be the core of so many things you write about through your writing life. No? I would, I would try it. I mean, you're here, you're asking me the question, you know? I'm like, maybe you ought to give it a whirl. You know, keep your expectations really low. Lower the bar. So I say a lot, just lower the bar. Maybe um, what you want to do is just like get a rough draft down, and, you know, and get to the end. You know what I mean? You know, write like you think it's going to be a long story. Is it a story, a play? A, it's a play? So just, you know, maybe get like write out a, a 30 page version of it or a 20 page version of it. You see if that feels, you know. And take a look at it. Be, be kind to yourself. That often helps. You know, instead of like, telling yourself, ah, 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 you know what I mean? Be kind to yourself. I, I would say give it a try. Because it, what do you have to lose? What's, what's going to happen? What's like the worst thing that's going to happen if it doesn't come out like perfectly and beautifully? What's, what's, dang, it's okay. Try again. I mean, you have the right to, you have the right to write about things that are personal and important and kind of sad. And you have the right to write about them in a less than perfect and excellent way. Okay. Give yourself that right. You have that right. It's okay. We all do it. You know? We won't get to our step years and we'll be in revision land. You know, we'll be working on a second draft, third draft, whatever, you know. 
or shop, things like that, and it can improve it. Okay? And come back. Are you local? Do you live around here? Yes, yeah, so you come back and we, we will encourage slash, slash nag you appropriately. <laughs> you must continue. <laughs> okay, thanks. So good question, Nina. Thank you. Anybody? Yes? So I'm a couple drafts into this thing. And I'm a couple drafts into this thing, yeah. yeah. I won't tell you how many. Oh, um, okay. A hundred? Ten. Okay, but ten. Yeah. Yeah. I've been working on it for about three years. Okay. And there's a character who, like, didn't exist, who now exists, and is now a focal point of the story. Okay. But now I can't figure out the end of the play to write it. Okay. And, I, and like, that is paralyzing me with fear to the point that, like, I can get to the first, the end of the first act, but, like, I don't want to start the second act. Because, and it's not a one-act play, I'm guessing. Uh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you, you, you don't know, what's your name? Amara. Amara, you were, you've been here. Yeah, like yeah. once before. Yeah, I, I, rec I recognize you, I've seen you around or something. Anyway, oh, hey yeah. Amara, okay, so, 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 uh, in previous drafts, have you had an ending? Yeah. Okay, but those endings, because of this new character, for example, those endings are no longer working. Yeah. So, can you do, like, here's a fun exercise, and it's kind of easy. I mean, maybe you'll find it hard. But what I like to do is I like to think of ten, ten. Ten. That's the first part. So far, so good. Really stupid. They must be really stupid. Okay. Really stupid endings for your play. Ten really stupid endings for your play. Yeah, just think of them like, oh shit, you know, and then okay. like, well, they all eat spaghetti. I don't know. And then, so just write them down. And if you're, you're if you're enjoying yourself, you can do like five or ten more. So at the end of this exercise, which can take about you know five minutes, it shouldn't be too heavy. Don't be thinking too tough, right? This is just like off the top of your head, bum 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 bum. Right? Think of 10, 15, 20. Stupid. They must be stupid. They can't be good. They have to be like, who are good at? Right? Okay. And then you look at the list and you go, oh, shit. I don't know. Maybe you like one of them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you go with that one. Okay. Because that's going to be good enough to get you through Act 2. Cool. It's going to be good enough to get you through Act 2, I promise. Because all you need to do is just, the spirit is saying, come on, Amara, come on, what you got? What are you made of? And if you're going, I can't, I just can't. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Just, again, just take a chance. Take a chance. What's the worst thing that can happen? Hey, you write the wrong ending. Oh, gee. We have a white noise story that we won't tell right now. Oh, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. 
you can watch statues, you can watch other people's art. You can even, you don't even have to like go to a play or a movie. You can go to a museum. And then they are hanging on the wall, some beautiful things, or some sculpture, or you can go into nature. You can go into nature. You know, nature. <laughs> you know what that is, right? And you can go for a, for a walk, right? Anybody else? No, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. You take a break. Like what? Like what? And do what? Or just like chill? Take a break and work on something else. Oh, that's good. Take a break and work on something else. That's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Come back and read it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And come back and read it and see how I feel about it. That's smart. That's a good idea. Carol, what do you do? Oh. Carol is a ninja. She helps <laughs> and encourages someone else. Ah, and how does that help? How does that help? How does that help? You move forward. And then you're able to remind and think about your own work and be nice to yourself and help yourself to go on. And she has articulated the subtext of Watch Me Work. <laughs> Yeah, because when you see other people, when you, when you look around and you go, oh gee, I'm not alone in this. There are other people who are doing this too. You know what I mean? So suddenly you feel like, yeah, okay. This is, it's possible to, to write for one more day. Is there anybody else? Yeah. What doesn't work? When you feel like, nah, my work sucks. I hate my life. What doesn't work? Anything? Hitting your head against the wall doesn't work. Negative self-talk. Self You're right. Negative self-talk. It might feel good in a really kind of weird way. Because you might tell yourself, well, I'm just telling myself the truth. Yeah, I haven't gotten published. So I'm just going to remind myself that I haven't gotten published. And I'm just telling myself the truth. But here, that's one instance when you know, the truth will not set you free. Because that's not the truth, actually. The truth is, is that you're working on it. And we have to see that truth underneath the apparent reality. We have to see what's really going on. Right? Which is, I'm doing the work, I'm showing up, I'm giving it my best effort, right? I'm being brave, I'm doing this for my community, whatever, you know? Okay? That's a good question. Who is that from, from Insta? Their handle is not a dog walker. No. <laughs> That's great. Not a dog walker. Thanks for, thanks for asking that question. That's great. Dog walker from a future dog walker. Oh, from a future dog walker. Right. <laughs> Anybody else have a... Yes, ma'am. What's your name? Hi, I'm Jason. Jason. Hey, Jason. What's um, happening? So, when I see a really good play, it feels so clear. Like, I watch it and I go like, oh, I can pick out all these problems that they tackle. But one of the problems I have when I write is that I want to throw like, everything at my characters. Like, I get so distracted by new ideas. Um, I get so distracted by new ideas that I kind of like don't make any progress on them the problem that I've already given my characters. Um, I was just hoping to maybe talk to that. Maybe like how to filter through maybe some issues or like some conflicts that you want to put your characters through. I mean, and maybe this stems from impatience. Like, I just want to finish it. I just want to like, get the work done. And maybe that's part of the first like draft process or the second draft is to just really like make it really long and intense and then you have cuts. I was just hoping I was hoping some people could talk to that. So as Jason's writing along, he gets distracted, you say? Yeah. Kind of like, oh look, there's something that can be put in the play, right? Oh look, there's something. Oh like that. So I know. Like butterflies are beautiful, you know, right? Okay. Do you have a notebook? I see you have a notebook in your hand. Could you make note of those things? It's, I, I, I have like a hundred notebooks. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, you could, but it's, it's not working. Making note of, like, if, as you're writing along, you can say, oh, look, there's a butterfly, butterfly. 
Oh look, there's a toad. A toad. Can you just can you, can you just make note of them? And instead of jumping off the path, you go and follow them. You see the difference? Yes. Yeah. It's like meditation. We meditate. Some of us do. Maybe all of us do. Right. We're all, we're all, we, when we meditate, I'm just going to say it like that. When we meditate, the thoughts come into your mind. And instead of like following after them, right? Or say you're, in a, say you're in a relationship and you're walking down the street. And you see a wonderful looking someone walking by. You're not gonna, you're not gonna fall. You might just say, wonderful looking someone. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna be that kind of person, right? So that's who you wanna be. That's who you wanna be for your, you wanna be your rock steady for your project that you're working on. You can take note of those things, but you don't have to chase them. So you're gonna take note of them in your notebook, what the notebook is for, and you're gonna stay on the path with your work. And yeah, maybe you are impatient to finish, or maybe you're scared of finishing. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. Does that make sense? Are you local? Yes. Of course. If you want, you know, if it's helpful, come back because we can continue to encourage you. Yeah. <laughs> Just through our presence of whatever. The presence of whatever. Anybody else? writing many half novels for about 10 years. Um, and I just finished one about four months ago. Thank you, thank you. Fine. Um, and the funny thing is that like, I, over that time, I got so invested in enjoying just the process of writing. Right? That now I kind of am not sure what to do with it, because I know I'm, I enjoy the process of writing, and, um, and I haven't sent it out, I haven't workshopped it much, I haven't workshopped it too much, really. um, and I'm not really sure whether I want to do anything with it in a way, but I'm also not sure if that's even scared of you know, changing, and whether that's, I should you know, send it out and do it better. That's a great question. Is that everybody heard what you're saying? Um, do you have a clue, an inkling about why your other novels were unfinished? Uh, I think it was just felt, you know, two years after this novel, I decided to write something else. Right, that right, right. Small. Right, right, right. Uh, so it's a little. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> sure. Well, well, no, it's a lot of focus, actually. You have a huge amount of focus to write anything, to do anything. You have to have focus. You know, and not always, you guys have to keep a lot of words and, and things in your head. So you have a lot of focus. You so we don't need to tell ourselves that untruth, right? Okay? But I, my guess is that you also have a lot of fear, which is fine. We all have fear. That's why we're here. Not because it just rhymes, but actually it's true. You know, it, it's like, oh shit, now that I've finished the writing part, which you've actually done after several years of trying, which is great, now I don't want to cross the finish line. I don't know. Because it's risky to cross the finish line and suddenly like, people have opinions about what you're doing. <laughs> and sometimes you want to say thank you, and sometimes you want to say fuck you. Sometimes they have great opinions, sometimes their opinions are stupid and you're opening yourself up to the world and that's hard and it's scary and you must do it do it you know it, you say workshop you have a writer's group i do parts so. okay so you, could you take your novel to to your to the real yeah, oh, okay okay so you can take it to it get till it gets to a point where you feel like you could Show it to some reps or something? I mean, I think it's kind of there. Okay, you know, okay. I just don't want to enter, like, I, when people praise me, I right. actually end up not looking after the honesty. Right, I'm right, right. Kind of right, right, right. Um, so I'm worried that it's going to cause me to not be in a place where I am committed to the process. You know what I'm saying? Right, because right. Because people like it. 
conversation about these things, but sometimes it's, it's like hard and embarrassing maybe to, to, to feel like, gee, I have a question and I don't know who to talk to, you know? Or, you know, but you have a whole community. Look at all these people. And look, I just gotta say, a shout out for like, look at the different kinds of people we've got today. Look at all these beautiful people. I mean, it's exciting. And we're all like in this boat together. And it's going to the happy place, baby. <laughs> four we have four minutes, so who's 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 got a, another question or a question? Yeah, yeah sure. So Oceana on Facebook wants to know if you don't have a clear concept, but you have a set of ideas and things you're interested in. Where do you start? Right. Oh, so their issue is different from theirs. So you've got a clear concept. So, 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 I would just say, maybe you guys give me some, I would just say, start writing. Just start walking. If you don't know where you're going, what did, who, who said that? Was it Thoreau or Emerson or maybe you? I know by going where I have to go, someone said that. Either that's a famous quote or some famous wonderful person. You know, so just start, just start moving, start walking. And in my experience, the spirit is going to meet you halfway. Things will start to magnetize in your direction. You walk out of the house and you end up here, and here I am talking to you, and I think you got to talk about it. So, yeah, so. <laughs> okay, okay, but see, things begin to magnetize toward you if you're going to make an effort. What did Martin Luther King say? He said, You don't have to know the whole staircase, just take the first step. And that's what we're doing. So, I would suggest just take a few steps in that direction and keep your ear open. Make a writing time if, you're, if writing is what you're talking about. Make a time every day. Maybe get a timer. You know, you can use your phone, although you okay, can timer. Because your phone is cracked because it has all these other nice little fun things on it. So a regular timer like this is really great because it doesn't distract you. And you set it for, you know, 20 minutes. And you have a 20 minute writing period every day. And that accumulates like compounded interest, like putting a dollar in the bank every day. That should add up. And that's good. And that's all that we're doing, just accumulating our stuff. I know, I use that. Because <laughs> it means so, you know. But does that make, does that make sense? You know? So, uh, and it can happen any time in the writing process. If you're work, just take a few steps. Just take a few steps. That's all you have to do. Keep that energy going. It'll also keep apathy at bay, you know? And you can, it, it, even if you're sad, you say, like, I'm crying. Just keep that. Like that. Okay? And sometimes, of course, you sit when you meditate. <laughs> That's fun. Anybody else? We're good? Yeah, yeah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you think What's your name? Oh, my name's Erica. Erica, okay. Um, do you think it's better to work on your characters first or the plot first? Did you hear Erica? Did you hear a question? That's a really good question. Characters first or plot first? Here's a trick. Ready? Here's a trick. Your characters are your plot. Your plot is your characters. Same thing. A lot of times they think, oh, write a long backstory, you know? Or write a 20 page uh, thesis or, or pay, a 20 page report on what your characters are and what they eat for breakfast and what shoes they wear and all that blah 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 blah. blah. Your character is going to reveal their plot. Think of uh, what play? Uh, Hamlet. You know Hamlet? Okay, great. Think of Hamlet. So he shows up, he's looking around, his friends say, yo, man, the other night, last night there was a ghost. You know, he's like, a ghost of who? A ghost of your dad. Oh, shit, yeah, my dead dad. Yeah, so we know a lot about his character already, right? It works like that. So just work on your story and your character at the same time. Tell yourself, what story do I want to tell? and your characters will emerge kind of organically. Story and character are connected, okay? Let's not separate them, right? They're, they're actually connected. Good question, hey, come back, come back. Are you local? Oh, well, well then visit us here on the interwebs, because we're there. Six o'clock? And we're here. Yay, yay. So where do we come off? Can tell us? We're back on April 22nd. Oh wow, that long. Because yeah, there are all these events in the public theater. Yeah. Oh, so. Yeah. Okay. So we're back in April 22nd. Thanks for coming, you guys. Yay!